2022, the secretary will call the roll, please. And Sheila Faro is absent, Vice Chair Finity. Present. Secretary is here, Board Member Long. Present. Board Member Catalinato. Present. Board Member Mutu. Present. Board Member Neely. Present. We have a quorum. Very good. I'm going to read the legal notice into the record. Welcome to the May 12, 2022 meeting of the Town of the Southampton Planning Board due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with Chapter 56 of the Laws of 2022. And until at least June 8, 2022, all of the board's meetings will be held remotely via video conference. So we ask the public to continually check the town's website for updates and new information. And now we have to go to, we are going to Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic, Republic it stands, it stands, it stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay, let me read the rest of this. We have a full agenda posted on the town's website for today's meeting. The town's planning staff, as well as the applicants and their representatives will be participating via Zoom webinar, which is moderated by CTV. <clears throat> Charles Certain will be muting and holding the speakers in a virtual waiting room until it is their time to give testimony before the board. A reminder that applicants and their agents should state their name and address for the record. As is typical, there are no public comments allowed during our daytime meetings, nor is it appropriate for the public to use a chat phone Function to comment on applications. The link to participate in this meeting via Zoom can be found on the town's website. This meeting is also being live streamed on the town website on the town clerk's meeting portal. If you have difficulty accessing the meeting, please visit the town clerk's meeting portal and click on the instructions link. And uh, I think we do have staff. I'm going to pull up. Uh, I did just get myself organized. Um, the first, the, we do have a uh, item, but I don't know if Claire's here. Anthony, did you want to start us off? Um, Claire's uh, just logging in right now. Oh, um, okay. Let's, let's try and go in order then. Uh, Vice Chair Finity, <laughs> Yes. January 13th, 2022 minutes. Oh, okay. Very good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Robin. Second. Second by George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Uh -huh. We have six. I want to get this right. No, five. Yes. Two, uh, one absent, one vacancy. No, we have six. Robin's still here. I'm still here. Six. Wait a minute. One, Sorry. two, three, four. Okay, six. Six present. One absent. One absent. Apologize. Did you not count yourself, Dennis? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> I evaporated. And Claire is with us. Great. Claire, are you going to take us to uh, Wireless Towers, item one? Yeah, this is a presentation. Um, if you recall, we had done a pre-submission uh, report about a year ago on this um, for cell tower, maybe more than that. Um, it was along uh, Montauk Highway in West Hampton. So the applicant's representative, which I'll ask you to let in, Charles, uh, Bailey Larkin, John Bennett's office, and I think Tim Rum is going to be in attendance. Let me just double check that. Coming in. Great, thank you so much. And then um, they're gonna present uh, an alternative to you. So the original application was 125 feet tall and they're coming forward with a stealth tower with no external antennas for 105 feet. And they have a visual presentation to show you for your consideration. We would, the next step would be Secra on this and uh, you wanted a visual to look um, to review uh, as this is near an open space parcel from the town of Southampton and uh, the visual impact from uh, Montauk Highway and the adjacent roadways for its importance identified issue. So Bailey's here, I see, and Arius is here, yep. So um, we had a new visual study prepared, but we also revised our plan. Uh, to reduce the height of the tower by 20 feet from what had previously been shown. Uh, we had been proposing a tower at 125 feet in height and now it's been reduced down to 105. Uh, it also, during the pendency of the revisions, um, this had been an application for Verizon and T-Mobile. 
now AT&T has joined as well. So this uh, tower would support Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T as designed at this lower height. Um, to address the reduction in height and also the board's comments about specific locations for renderings, our client retained areas designed to do uh, revised re uh, analysis, visual analysis, and um, I don't know if Steve can share it or I can. That's helpful. Bailey, I can share it. It's okay. That would be great. That would be great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay, hello, uh, this is Steve Naroda with Aris Design. I'm also George, uh, uh, joined by George Flanagan from our office as well. Uh, so this is the, the uh, product of our um, presentation here that we, uh, for the view shed study. Uh, essentially, we took a drone, we flew our drone at um, 105 feet above grade at the site, the proposed cell tower location. And then we visited 13 viewpoints, view shed points, uh, in the area um, to see where the drone is visible. And then also, then we took the imagery and modeled in the proposed cell tower <coughs> to, to illustrate where the, where the cell tower would be visible and where it wasn't visible. So this is a list on this sheet here. You'll see um, this captures 12 of the viewpoints. The 13th is further north where it gets captured up here. Um, uh, so it didn't fit on this this map, but uh, here's these are twelve of the view viewpoints, and we had three locations that were visible, and they were essentially around the uh, you know adjacent area, the streets around the cell tower. So you have uh, viewpoint viewpoint one is actually not visible because it's of the, the amount of tree uh, species in the area, as a lot of pine, so it kind of blocks the view of the tower, um, scroll back here. Uh, viewpoint two, uh, Seabreeze and Montauk, this location here, I'll just scroll down to it. There's the image we took, the, the drone, you captured the drone here as that circle, whereas the drone is at 105 feet above grade. And then this, we modeled in the proposed cell tower. Uh, viewpoint three, further along Montauk, um, just scroll here to it. There's the drone at 105 feet and there's the tower. And we had viewpoint four, which is Old Country Road here to the north. Uh, it's more of as, vis uh, as visible kind of seasonally because of the tree coverage. Here's, um, sorry. This is the view from the road. So you see a lot, you know, a lot of trees and vegetation, and it's very hard to see. I, I you can discern where it is uh, in the photograph, but it is it is in the background. All the other views, I'll just walk through. Uh, view point five. This is a flagpole that is not the cell tower. Um, the drone's not visible. Six, uh, not visible. Seven, not visible. Eight, uh, not visible. 10, not visible. Sorry, that was nine. 10, not visible. 11, again, not visible. 12, can't be seen. 13, and then our four, yeah, 13 is our last one, yeah. Just going back to the map here. So that these um, renderings taken, I don't know if Steve mentioned it in February. Right. So uh, this would be probably the most visible that the site would be year round. Right. And there's two visible sites, or how many? So we point two and three. Two, three, and then four to the north, Claire. It's just it's seasonal. It's a lot, it's a lot of tree trees in this area, so you can see through the trees. You'll see it in the distance. Mm -hmm. 
And viewpoint 12, I know the board was interested in this viewpoint. Um, I, uh, is because it's like further down, right? It's like a lower elevation here. Right. Okay. And the pole was dropped 20 feet in height from what had previously been proposed, which uh, is taken into account with this study. <laughs> Is there, is there a slope upwards at that property that um, I, I sort of remember that being the um, the old old hotel that was there, right? Or is it or is it slightly west of there? At the top of the hill, there used to be an old hotel, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't recall. I don't no? think it was on this property. No. no? Mm -hmm. OK. Maybe it's a little bit west of there. Did you um by chance I, did you um consult the airport at all? They have a they'll have to by law get an FAA determination uh, that says there's no hazard to air navigation for this site. So they will have a determination on that. But Craig, I think you're right. There used to be a, an old hotel or a motel or a small structure on that site. In fact, that site if I remember clearly, is that still zone motel? Um, are you talking about this area here? Where, where the cell tower is proposed. Oh, what the zoning is? Um, but zone motel and residence? Um, yeah, motel, yeah, right, right. exactly. Yeah, so it's sort of it's sort of up a hill, right? Well, from where the viewpoint 12 is, it definitely is uphill. Well, where the, where the cell tower is located, it's it's on an, it's, it would be on an upward slope, right? It's, it's pretty much on the high ground in that area. If, or am I incorrect about that? Property is fairly flat, to be honest. It's flat, yeah. Yeah, just looking at the topo that we have, and it okay. is up about four feet from Montauk Highway to where the site is. Okay, so in my mind's eye, I'm seeing it wrong. I think I think perhaps it's to the left, uh, to the um, to the west of where I'm west. thinking. Yeah. Okay. So my only concern, though, is um, it looks like there's there's a void in viewpoints um, between uh, seven, twelve, and three. There's a residential area in there. Um, how that might affect their their view? Actually, more so between viewpoints three and seven. You see those houses in there? Mm -hmm. Was there a reason why you omitted that as a uh, test spot? No, uh, we, we were just on the areas that were in public right away area for viewport viewpoints. Oh, in other words, you can't you can't go flying a drone over someone's house. Right. Yeah. Right. You could from that that uh, street though to the south of viewpoint three, right? This street? Or yeah, I see the street that comes up that runs parallel. Yeah, not Beaver Dam. Um, right. What are those? What's the street right? God, I'm drawing a blank. Well. Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember it either. I can. I have the aerial. Hold on yeah. a second. It, it's Fiddler Crab. Fiddler Crab. Trout, right. Yeah. Yeah, Beaver Dam. There's a plume grass way uh, branches off a of sea breeze uh, yeah. and then fiddler crab uh, yeah. it's off that. And there's like a light industrial development right beyond that, between that and Monto Highway. There's some highway business in there, the I think. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the, one advantage with the fiddler crab, the view shed, when we don't have um, a view point from there but we do have if you were looking to the north and west from fiddler crab there would be structures of the houses and then trees on the west side of that and then the tower setting set off you know in the distance so not i don't think it would be visible from there and it's gonna be a little lower elevation on fiddler crab as well that tower is just for Everyone's records. It's 285 feet north of the property line, north of Montauk Highway. So we tried to set it as far north into this lot, uh, away from residences as possible. That's so right. It the, uh, the, uh, the mini golf, remember the mini golf 
facility we have mm -hmm. before us. It's almost adjacent to that. <clears throat> I was going to ask the same question. That's a vacant lot. Is there anything proposed for that lot? Claire? Mini golf, the mini golf property? Where, where the cell tower is, it looks like it's clear there's no housing or anything on that. Is there anything in the hopper? Nope. Yeah, cemetery. That's all cemetery. This is the cemetery property. Okay. All right. Yep. I'm Supposed concerned also the way Craig is that in this whole residential area, there's no view shed anywhere between three and seven. Between three and seven. seven. That's, that's, fiddler, that's fiddle, Craig. Yeah. This area here. I agree with Craig on that. Is that uh, the only view that you think you're lacking? He just disappeared. I'm going to do a, a site visit. I'm going to drive over there. It's not far from my home. Okay. Hi, this is George Flanagan from um, Eris Design. Um, when I was driving over there, I was uh, operating the drone and doing the picture studies. I, the, the trees were very, very dense over in that area. And I mean, I'm not quite sure from that street exactly, but they were pretty tall in that area. And it was hard to see it basically anywhere that wasn't in that little triangle lot there. It was hard to see the tower from any other spot, really. It was all pretty thick vegetation. Can you go back to three again? Okay. So I'll just, I'm just go up to the map real quick. The, the viewpoint is, uh, there's three. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the drone and there's the tower. That's right in front of the um, car dealer, right? The car yep. dealer. Ruby, Ruby, oh, yep. And I wonder. Directly, dead on. If the car dealership would block it, you know, there's, if there was a view. There's also some construction going on next to review car dealership. Claire, do you know what that is? Is yeah, that a, it's, um, a light industrial? Remember that? Yep, it's highway business. Uh, it is a contractor, and Arius worked on that as a site plan. So okay. the plan board reviewed that and approved it. It was approved maybe three or four years ago, I think. Yeah, three lots total. Yep, Remember. only yeah. one's come through so far, the one that's being built. I think maybe the other place, if, we, if you're looking to do some additional abuse point is along Baker's Avenue, uh, you know, in that area, the other side of the creek, which, which would, you know, potentially project or uh, see views of that property behind the dealer, you know, they're kind of behind Rubio's dealership and that light industrial, but they are in line with, um, you know, with where, the, with exactly where this tower is going to be across the creek, uh, behind Rubio's. Behind Rubio's. Is that, is that residential area along Beecrest Avenue? Mm -hmm. Do you want to pull the map up again? Yeah. So south of where viewpoint 12 is. Yeah, in that area. So oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Bay, that's Bay Crest. And then this, a little bit to your left of that is Bishop's, I think it's Bishop's uh, Avenue or Bishop Avenue. Yeah, in that area. So you might be able, to be able to get some access in that area to fly the drone and see what impact it has. The drop of 20 feet, is that because of the elevation of where the cell tower is going? Is that why you were able to go 20 feet? Uh, no, I, I think the board had expressed uh, 
disfavor with 125 feet. And so uh, we went back to our client and asked them if they could potentially drop the height to 105, um, which is fairly consistent with, I think, the height of the tower that was approved in, in Watermill recently mm -hmm. um, on Montauk Highway. Um, and, and actually lower than several other towers that have been approved. Um, like the one by Mr. Tortorella's property that wireless tower constructed was actually at 150 feet in Hampton Bays. Um, and the uh, Bridge Hampton site elite towers in Bridge Hampton is at 120 on, I believe it's Foster Avenue. Um, so this was proposed at 105, we're trying to reduce the height some uh, to address the board's comments. And, and the reception and everything that you need is sufficient? It makes me question it, the other towns. Well, we had submitted a, 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 an RF analysis, radio frequency analysis, um, showing that there will be a loss in coverage from dropping the height. Um, and I think it loses some coverage actually to the south in those residential neighborhoods. Um, but to offset you know, visual impact, which I know is your primary concern on this site, uh, they were willing to drop the height to 105 um, for this project. And to be clear, no other um, antennas or anything external connected to the pole, right? No, okay. it would be a, a stealth tower. I know the board has a preference for seeing a galvanized pole, which is what was rendered for you. And Bailey, do these do these poles? Um, I'm asking, but I think I know the answer. Is do they come with uh, support wires, or just a you know straight uh, monopole? Uh, like just a, a just a monopole. Um, all the cabling is inside the monopole itself, uh, and the antennas are inside. There will be a fenced compound around the base where the base equipment will be located. Um, but all of the wiring's inside. The antennas are inside, and it's it's just as what was rendered will be visible. What kind of wind speeds can they tolerate? Uh, they have to meet all of the uh, building code requirements for wind speed and they base it on the district they're in, which I know Southampton has a very high wind speed requirement. Um, but there will be a, a structural analysis that will be filed with the building department, confirming that it'll support uh, adequate wind speeds for this area. Okay. So are we recommending one or two more you shed uh, views to in that gap area? I mean, ideally, yes. Um, I'm personally going to go down there and, and do my own. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say, if you see a lot of like high vegetation, Craig, and yeah, I kind of know the area, but I haven't been down there in a while. Yeah. yeah. Would it help the applicant to do pictures from those viewpoints? Yeah. And just see. Okay. Um, yeah. Just pictures. Then, then you would know that, right? Yeah, that way we could all see it. Yeah, so maybe do a couple pictures from a couple sites, um, kind of surround it. Claire, I think the record should at least reflect that if there is the, it should have some documentation in the record for the reasoning for that gap. If it's because it is heavily vegetated and we <clears> don't need to do it, but the record should reflect that, that we at least considered and requested the information there. So um, I would suggest having something for the record as to the gap between in the, in the, the coordinates of v, v, uh, viewpoint 12, three and seven, something for the record there. Either that we don't need it because it's redundant or heavily vegetated or we do need it. But, okay. It, Bailey, do you feel you could provide that with some backup Maybe pictures? Some photographs, um, just yes. from basically you're saying the end of that one court near viewpoint seven, just to the east of it, and also yeah. in that other street between viewpoint 11 and viewpoint three. And there's also, what was the, um, going north from viewpoint seven, there's a street there. I think uh, right where the end is, yes. That one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that Bay, Baycrest here. Right. Bishop Bishop Avenue. Bishop yeah. Avenue, yes. Sure. Okay. Let's just clarify that section so we don't have anything open in the record. Okay. 
Any other action, Claire, on this? Uh, no, this was a work session to kind of to right. get a handle on it again and and to review the changes. Um, and uh, once they have this information, they can bring it back. Um, I think, I'm sorry, I have bad memory, but I don't know where we're at right now, but we may be just deemed incomplete at this point as we're waiting for this or, or they haven't submitted the site plan application, but I'll, I'll have a handle for the next meeting, but uh, we'll wait for that information and we'll go from there. Secret will be your next step, most likely, when they're pursuing the application. Okay. This was discussion, but it, we're still in regular session. It's not a work session we're in now, right? It's regular session, yeah. Regular session, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Claire, Thank you. are you ready to take us to Stone Creek? or? Um, actually, I'm going to take a break, and uh, Jackie's going to come on board, I think. And okay. um, she's got some... Uh, She's got a pressing matter this afternoon, so she's gonna go first with her items. Okay. Thank Great. you. That's okay. Thanks. Hey, Jackie. Hi. How are, are you? How gonna are you gonna go? Are you gonna take us to M four? Yes, I'll go okay. in order. That's uh, item eight. Yeah. So this is just an extension. We are working really closely with the applicant's representative, and we're almost done. This is the drainage swale common driveway issue. So uh, we do now have the final version and I'm just uh, waiting on engineering's comments so I can formalize with the approval and bring it back to the board. So this would be an extension until next meeting, May 26th. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion, motion by Gloria and second by Craig. All in favor, aye, opposed. Aye. Mentions. Aye. We have six yes, one absent. Great. Um, and the next one also, um, I just spoke with the applicant's representative. Um, you know what, um, there's, yeah, Santora, I have a draft final conditional approval, but I do want to go over something um, just because uh, there's a technicality and I want to double check the wording of the variance. So if we could also extend this one to May 26 as well, so I can resolve that um, in the meantime. Okay, very good. Do we have a motion? Motion, motion with Gloria. Second. Second by Robin, all in favor, aye. Opposed, aye. Mentions, six yes, what absent. Um, and next is Broda, Laurent, uh, Laurent and Chantel. Uh, we are also working with the applicant. Christine and I have met um, with some of the neighboring property owners and the representatives. What number is uh, so that? Um, Jackie, I'm sorry, I got lost. 15. Oh, sorry, did I skip one? 15. Uh, oh, 15, yes. 15, okay, we jumped over bridge with those. Oh, oh, did we? Yeah. Well, let's stay on Broda. Let, let's finish okay. that one up. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I flipped to it. Sorry, myself with my paperwork. Um, yeah, so 15 is Broda. So um, this is the two lot subdivision with open space where it has the driveway access issue. That yeah. flag, um, if you'll recall, we had a bunch of public hearings in the late fall and early winter. Yeah. So I think we have a creative idea, but we're kind of meeting with all parties and trying to formulate a new plan. So I'm waiting on that revised plan that I would like to show to you guys. Um, so we did get a, a revision, but it wasn't the correct revision. So I'm just asking that that be extended again till June 9th so I can get the survey revision that we requested um, in an acceptable form. And then we can bring it back to the board to show you what we're thinking of. So do we, is that going to be from May 26, Jack, or do you need a lower... Uh, Actually, June 9th was the June agreed date. Very good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by George, second by uh, Lori and I caught on the second. All in favor, aye. Opposed abstentions, aye. six yes. It was a tie, Robin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to jump back down to Bridgewood, Jack, yeah. item 14? Yeah. Would you guys like to see the uh, property? Uh, sure. This is to approve the uh, site disturbance. So. Revenge. Okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to click fast. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, <clears throat> this is the property, um, and it, this is the survey. I was just there um, in, I guess it was very late April, um, last Monday, actually. Um, so they had done some clearing and cleared out the understory. They have since revegetated this, uh, whatever <coughs> that rainy Monday was, I think it was last Monday. Um, so everything looks good. They did a good job, but, uh, they basically had renovated for the screened in porch and then had taken out some of the understory with their landscaper. So they have now replaced that. Um, and I am recommending approval of the, uh, revegetation plan. Um, and it's already been done. So just uh, asking for, um, you know, 
the um, you know the CC can be released. So uh, the, the, one, is... the one year policy, yeah. Okay, Jackie. Also, uh, before we vote, could you, you stop screen share? You know what it is. Oh, I can't see. I yeah, realize no, that. Yeah, no problem. Valerie, no okay, problem. You have a motion to approve the revenge. Motion. Motion by Gloria and second by George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes. And you've got um, oh, that's Claire's. I ask you a question about revenge before we move forward. Someone asked me from our, my community, and I, I wasn't able to answer the question. When <laughs> someone's in violation of uh, clearing restrictions and they receive a summons, um, do, are, do they have to pay the fines after a reveg, or do they get out of their fines when they bring their reveg plan to us? No, and you know what? It's, um, to explain this, it used to be a violation of the code, so then they would go to court. And then the court would say, all right, you pay this thousand dollar fine, fine. But also you now need to go and show proof that you contacted the appropriate, you know, land management department. Right. Um, so it used to be Marty's office, the environment division. And then we realized in the code that under the aquifer protection, the planning board actually has authority. So we changed the process and basically said, instead of you going to code, wasting docket time, wasting money and resources for them to actually then send you back to the department or division that was appropriate to review these. We basically said, you don't have to go to court anymore. You come directly to us, but you're basically paying that thousand dollar fine wrapped into the $1,600 fee. So we always had like a fee of around like $500 to review these applications. And some are very lengthy review. You know, sometimes, you know, you guys are seeing the result, but there's a lot of back and forth site visits and stuff that needs to be done. So essentially that $1,600 is going to wrap in the application fee and the violation fee. But then we work with you and depending on the situation, building permit where you didn't know, or it's a buffer, we'll work with you on the revegetation and the timing essentially okay thanks for the clarification yeah you're welcome um so dennis the next one i have is blessing fields blessing field the yeah. Highway. yeah so we had um assumed lead agency uh the zba had coordinated with us so uh, probably about a month or so ago we had um a requested lead agency so we are now lead agency although the zba uh did have some issues with the pyramid law because this is a very thin lot um, and the large building in the back, which is going to be a <coughs> contractor, like, a, you know, a big, you know, storage building for special trade contractor. It just has a lot of pyramid relief that's needed because of the narrowness of the lot. So they're actually working on that and revising the plan. So I don't have the plans or the traffic impact study that we asked for. Um, related to this. So they are in the works of revising everything with their architectural plans and that. And I just spoke with their representative and met with them uh, earlier this week. So they are requesting an extension of the seeker action deadline till June 26. So that way I can get those materials and then we can properly coordinate with the appropriate agencies. And Jackie, quick question. Um, yeah. This project is unusual in that it's directly, it'll, it lines with a signalized intersection. Will, will, does that signal that an estate road, right? So does that uh, signal it's, it's has DPW to be, actually right there? Oh, DPW, uh, yeah. state, right? Uh, county. County, mm -hmm. county. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, do they have to somehow recalibrate that? I'm guessing. I never. I should have gone on yeah. the other side of that. Yeah. Uh, um, I, so what I, do you I, see on the other side? Just a blinking or nothing? Or? So very conscious of that. Sometimes it is blinking. And I asked, actually, um, this has changed from Lisa Poyer from Interscience, and now it's Mike Schiano. So um, a lot of this, too, you know, I have to, like, reconvey to Mike, um, which he's working diligently. But the county is aware of it. But it does have, I believe, during rush hour, from what I'm told from the applicant's representative, that it's actually signalized. So when it's very dense, like in the morning and then the afternoon, like evening hours, um, morning and night rush hour, basically, it is triggered. The rest of the time when it's not during that hour span, it's a blinking uh, red light. Um, so I asked for coordination of that. The Suffolk County DBW is actually going to give us further information, um, but they have requested, it's a standard form called a 239F, um, which we now will refer usually with a site plan. But I actually was speaking with Mr. Shiano and saying, you know what, I'll send that with our coordination letter. So that way they can start the permitting process and making their recommendations based upon that light. So we'll have the information, what they want for the apron, how the signalized light will be, you know, basically triggered. Um, but it's already there. But, you know, maybe in the future, it's always going to be triggered by that sensor, similar to the Macy's parking lot. So that way everyone can get in and out of there safely. But I don't have the recommendations yet, but that's why we're going to coordinate with them through Secret. And I I'm going to send that form. Is, is Macy's on a trigger? 
Yeah, Macy's is a sensor. Yeah. Sensor. Okay. Then mm-hmm. you want a sensor there. Because I mean, you, yeah. even on the off hours, people people approach a signal, traffic signal, all of a sudden they see yeah. a vehicle like you, you think they're running a yeah. light. You know, you think, well, oh, I've got a green, I get I yeah. food sailing yeah. to the diner. It's like, wow. <laughs> Yeah. And Robin actually brought this up um, as, and we brought it up in the pre-submission as a traffic safety issue. So um, we're looking at that closely. I just don't have all the answers yet, Yeah. Okay. Um, but they have contacted the County DPW. Um, and I do believe I've even seen people uh, where I've actually, now that I live in East Quag, I've seen people um, basically pulling out of there and I've had to stop because of one person oh. um, and that's on my way home. So I experienced it once myself that it was triggered and I was stopped to let that person person out of that pool company um, yeah. that's there now. So I think we can coordinate all of this, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to send that form so that way the county can formalize their process Good. and give us recommendations for a CRA. All right, great. Jackie, could you just confirm the date? Um, uh, you said, just said June 26, but I have a note from the paperwork, August 22nd. Did I Oh so, yeah, I don't think that's right because I think they're just going to get me plans within the next uh, couple weeks, um, so they didn't want to extend it that long. So I'm not sure. Yeah, just just double check the paperwork. Yeah, unless it was in the agenda, but I have a I have confirmation from the applicant that they're going to get me stuff soon. I think um, it was in the packet. Okay. Okay. It's, I'll take a look. It's my notes from the packet that I'm referring to. Okay. Oh, and you know what? We did just recently um, approve the pre-submission report to be extended until August, um, which is, uh, I have to admit, like it might've been still a draft in the agenda and I might've had the program open, but the official date for SECRA is June 26th. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome, no problem, thank you. Did you wanna keep going, Jackie, on Firestar? Yeah, did you guys make a motion on Blessing? Uh, uh, What do they need, an extension? Uh, Yeah, they're gonna extend the SECRA timeline to give us more time to review the materials. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Robin. Second. Second by Gloria. And all in favor, aye. aye. Those aye. Motions. We have six yes. Great. Um, and happened? the next one, uh, the next one is Firestar Holdings. Would you guys like to see the plans? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a three lot subdivision. It's coming back in with health department and they've met the requirements of the pre-application report. So this is a lot here. Um, <coughs> you'll see here. And there's actually like a driveway here and some people's backyards. We actually required this buffer, which this fronts on Montauk Highway. Um, So what we are looking at, here's a zoomed out view. Uh, So this is uh, a church right here, another church. So this is a wooded vacant parcel here. Uh, There must have been some kind of structure here before, which has since been demolished. Uh, I have to admit, though, this is actually a very nice um, wooded area, and it seems to be a haven for wildlife when I did my site visit at the pre-application report stage. Um, But it does have um, adjacent property owners that are very close. So received comments from some of them during the public hearing process from these people that own here, as well some inquiry phone calls from the people to the west. Um, So what we're looking at now is a three lot plan. So um, because of the closeness and nature of the amenities here and because of the buffer here, we're trying to match that buffer here. So this was 25. So we requested 25 along the whole lot here. And then um, basically the (coughs) trip is 20 feet conformance with flag lot policy. This we asked for a buffer here too to move the common driveway easement over. Um, And as you can see, the common driveway is actually gonna be physically here. We just have an easement in case, you know, utilities are needed. So at the end of the day, you'll have this 20 foot buffer, 25 foot buffer here, um, a nice well-designed common driveway here. And then it doesn't encroach on any of the building envelopes here. Um, And then also they proposed a buffer along the front. So basically try to keep the roadside um, wooded character and then also keep a wildlife corridor for um, animals in this area. So, um, but they've complied with uh, the recommendations of the report. So I am recommending it be deemed complete. (laughs) Yeah, Jackie, are the, the lots, the, the lots being proposed similar size to the ones around? Uh, I believe so. Here, let's go back to the area. They meet, they meet zoning. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so they're kind of more narrow in nature, which actually they're probably a little narrower, um, but these will be well-shaped lots. So there'll be three. So there'll be one lot here, one lot here, and then the road fronting lot right here. So a different configuration, but similar to what you see up on Montauk Highway. See mm-hmm. all these lots here. So they'll actually be bigger than most of these. 
but you know, these ones probably just because of the historic property patterns, see how they're all like long and narrow. It was probably divided like that by, you know, historic property owner. So this is a kind of chunkier lot. So you'll have one, two, and then the road fronting lot will, will just conform with zoning. What is the building right where, yeah, right there, uh, in the adjoining here? property? Yeah. Is that, a, this, no, 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 go back, go back. This? No, no, the other way. This way? Yep, bingo. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's a residence with, um, it has uh, multiple accessory structures. I believe one, uh, when I was doing the research, if my memory serves me, one might have the benefit of like a cottage or a second residence on site, because this is a historic home right here. Do you need any buffer on that side for those residents? Um, it's pretty wooded over there. So we were kind of focusing on this area, um, but we can discuss that. Um, it would be a thin look strip. At that just to see yeah. that we're, we're not just ignoring yeah. that, that one residence. Yeah, and you know what? I do know that this was for sale um, and I do believe somebody has since purchased it. So they'll get noticed with the public hearing too. So that way they'll have a, a chance to view the application if they want to comment. Okay, but if we can take a look at it and just yeah. see if we could do any, without completely messing up the build, building envelope, if we yeah. can do anything to yeah. offer on that side. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at that. So I'll look at um, what the dimensional requirements are and look and see if we can get an appropriate size buffer. Great, thank you. Jackie. No problem. What's our action on this, Jackie? Uh, so this uh, would be the deem it complete and schedule a public hearing for June 9th. Okay, exit pull, exit the screen share. Yep. Do we have a motion to deem complete? Do you have to put anything in about looking at that buffer area there? I just made a note of it on my notes. So. I Okay, it doesn't affect the completeness or anything. No, we can we can bring it up at the public hearing too again. So I'll put that in my pre-hearing report, consider okay. Eastern buffer, and I'll notify the applicant that we're going to look at that as well. Okay, excellent. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Craig. Second. Second by Robin. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Six yes. That's a deemed completeness and to set the hearing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Claire, are you going to jump back in or... Um, J Jackie, do you want to just say that, you know, oh, yeah. the scar is off Thank the you, Yeah, yeah, the signature for number 21 is off the agenda. 21 is acknowledged for signature. Okay. Oh, oh, no, it's off the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Off the agenda. Yeah. They didn't, didn't get me the plans in time. Thank you. you. Have, yeah. Exactly. Do you have Thank to you. set a hearing date for, for 17? You set it for the 9th, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, for June 9th, we set it. June Thank 9th. you. <clears throat> Um, Claire, are you going to jump back in? Or? Yeah, I'll go in order. Okay. Um, Stone Creek Let's, in. Stone Creek is item two. That's Mike Sciato. If you could let him in. <coughs> um, Charles, <coughs> thank you. Um, so this is, we had a discussion at the last meeting. This was to deem the application incomplete. I will share my screen. There we go. So during COVID, they established an outside um, patio, but there was some other um, work that was done at the time. So um, they've come in with a site plan application, which we need more information on. Uh, town engineers to be involved in this. Um, and so we just want to get a complete application. But the applicant has asked for the temporary tent to be installed on the property. Um, I have spoken to the fire marshal on this. They would like some conditions just to make sure that it's a safe uh, place. First and foremost, that they their approval is secured prior to the installation of the temporary tent. Secondly, that they have a tent permit that's issued through their office and there'll be some conditions related to that. I believe that uh, one of the board members, maybe Jackie suggested that this come out. So I ran that by, um, Marty and he agreed uh, that this can just be removed. You know, just the area of gravel can be, it's not close to the wetlands. It looks like it's in the wetlands, but it's not. It's, uh, it's about uh, 50 feet away from the wetlands, but they're gonna remove this and just grass the area. Where's the um, tent going? Uh, it's over this right here, okay. area, yeah, there. Um, <laughs> so um, I just spoke to the fire marshal, this, um, today, so I don't have this written down, but some other conditions that he would to say the soup food service would only be in this area and not here, because you can see there's like a root eating area there. Um, that it only be 40 persons, and uh, there's some 
uh, propane tanks here that the, he'd like to see removed uh, from the property. So those are some conditions I could easily add to this project um, if you, the board was amenable to granting them uh, for the temporary permits until November 1st at the latest. In the meantime, proceeding with the site plan application for the entire project. Okay. My only concern, comment on this, is that um, the conflict between you know uh, pedestrians and and uh, wait staff and the parking lot. Yeah. Um, perhaps I don't know, Mike. Maybe the uh, owners of the restaurant would you know be mean, amenable to putting up some signs saying you know please or even a, a stop sign there saying you know please look out for servers and and patrons and the like. Yeah, I think that they'd be fine with doing that. Um, I, I should also note that I, I know that it's not part of the, the town code for, for uh, valet parking, but they actually do have valet parking here all the time. Mm -hmm. And the uh, just so that the board knows, uh, so people uh, unload from their cars on the uh, east side, not on the side where the, the tent is. Um, so uh, pedestrians uh, would actually be... Um, uh, Anyone that, that is heading out of their cars, um, they get out of their cars before they drive over there, and then they get into their cars near the exit on the other side. Yeah. So, so there's not necessarily that many. The only people that are driving in that area are people who are employed by the uh, by the building. Yeah, um, no, definitely, ballet certainly helps. Yeah, but but we, um, I I don't see why they would be uh, they would be amenable to uh, having right. signage. If, if that would make you more comfortable. Absolutely. And the restaurant was actually closed on Tuesday and it was uh, my wife and I's anniversary. And I'd like to make sure that that never happens again, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's condition number 12. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Good. Um, okay. Mike, Mike, if I could just ask a, a process question. Sure. Because um, I believe that if a, a, a restaurant wants to keep um, an outdoor eating area, now they have to come through <laughs> us to get um, a, a, an approval. And before it was a blanket because of COVID. I think, and I'm, Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so it, what should be the process? And is this an example of what we may see with other applications? This is an example because some things were done, you know, to help it out. And then there's, there's other, you pull something and something else happens, right? <laughs> so here the parking needs to be controlled, pedestrian access, as Craig is saying, these are all things we need to forward thinking, you know, make it safe for, uh, for this property. And so that takes a little review, you know, fire marshal can't review this in two minutes, the right kind of thing. So um, yeah, I think we'll set, think some will be easy, right? But we already saw North Sea Tavern as a work session. Do you remember that one that's in the back? Yeah, so we, we're starting to see these, but Channing December, Daughters. Hmm? Channing Daughters. The ten but, yeah, Channing ten Daughters ten. more recently. But if you remember, we have approved this prior in this instances um, uh, prior to COVID. So this is just to try to get a handle and ends recognizing that outdoor space is an amenity for everybody, you know, mm -hmm. for the restaurant and for our community. So we're trying to help them out too, you make know, it work. Yeah. yeah, make it work. Yeah. So we might come up with um, some code to that effect too. We're, we're going back and forth um, to make it easier for everybody. So, um, Claire, but, the, the, fire, the, the propane tanks that the fire marshal once removed, is that for mm -hmm. the heating? They were, of, uh, from my understanding, according to John Rankin, they were for um, heating tanks, uh, underneath the tent because that was permitted during COVID but is no longer permitted because it doesn't, tents and heating elements don't go together. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's why he wants them removed. Then they're in the floodplain. And so that's just not a safe position for them to be. If there was a flood, that would be unsafe. But so right now they're stored, they're stored there. Not rather they're than stored there. there. Very easy, I think, for them to remove them. And so we'll just have that as a condition. But, so, that's, but that's, not, that does, that's not to mean that they're not going to be used for, and it plan to be still using outdoor heating. Because, that, you know, I know with, with the outdoor dining for during the, the COVID years, that became a very popular option to have these outdoor heating towers. Mm -hmm. Right. To, 
They could use them uh, in the waiting area, uh, but they can't use them underneath the tent at all to come in. So uh, in this case, they can remove them. And if they want to propose them someplace else, that can be part of their site plan review. It would be amenable to that. And um, just picking up on this thread of discussions, learning as we go, um, what about lighting in the parking lot in the pedestrian area? Is that how is that parking lot lit? Is it lit at all? Are there, you know, kind of mood lights along the lot along there to light the way? Uh, just kind of curious what was done for the tent initially. And again, is this something we should think about, you know, going forward? I agree. Uh, we should think about lighting. Mike uh, can maybe speak to this, but when I saw the pictures, that was kind of mood lighting. You're right. It was those hanging lights from the trees. Right. Um, but we want to be safe, uh, and that's something we'll look up through the site plan. Mike, do you want to speak to that? Uh, yeah, so uh, that was one thing that was mentioned in the um, things that we need to address uh, <laughs> in in uh, for the site plan. Um, and uh, right now, there are um, actually on the on the south side of the building, there are floodlights on the on the south side of the building, which we're going to be replacing with uh, code compliant lights because right now they're not. Uh, fully shielded or, or uh, down facing. Um, they're like the original floodlights that were on the building when, when it was updated in like 1995. Um, and uh, so we're going to be addressing that as part of the site plan application. And also safety lights to, in order to access the, the, um, the tent outside and how we're going to be dealing with that. So that will be part of the site plan review. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so this would facilitate the tent going up on May 13th and with a, they have to be removed by November 1st. Um, and with the provision that's no vested rights um, and the conditions that I had mentioned before. But I can go through them again if the board's more comfortable. Well, one condition is, I, I think, sinus, uh, signage as per the direction of planning staff. If you okay. feel the need for a, a you know stop sign or... Okay. You know, they have those freestanding things. Okay, so I could do, uh, yeah, signs for pedestrian safety uh, for yeah. staff. Okay. Give them a list of what you think would be appropriate. Okay, no problem. That'll could be condition number seven. Okay. Okay. So, good. Well, this is an approval for the tent. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by Robin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? We have six yes. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Coming in. I don't think I have anyone for my next one. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. You can base town center? Yeah, it's for signage. This is to prove the signs. Um, this is the property, this is the building immediately next door to the Rite Aid. If you remember, we, we did the Rite Aid a couple of years ago. Um, this is the Rite Aid uh, portion of the building. And this is what was known as Hudson Savings Bank. Yeah. Okay. And oh, so yeah. Metro uh, Physical Therapy is taking over the space. Oh, good. Yes. And <clears throat> just... I hate vacant large buildings at that, like that sitting vacant. Mm -hmm. detriment to the whole shopping center. That's wonderful. Right. It's been so this, a long time. Yeah, it's great. So it's black. Um, oh, actually, this is the old one. Uh, oh, hey boy, I hope I saved it. Can you excuse me for a minute? I'm just going to get the, the latest plan. So the ARB reviewed this, and uh, they asked for the little butterfly to be removed um, from the sign. So the applicant did. I just want to, I'm sorry. What do they have against butterflies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Things are getting harsh. I know. A rough um, one. A rough but, one. Exactly. <laughs> so. They thought it was a logo. Right. They thought it was a logo. So I think I have this. <clears throat> I'm hoping this is it. Yep. Yes. Oh, yay. So there it is with uh, without the logo. 
the, the, the underneath the, it says aquatic pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. It's just what what is the pelvic floor? <laughs> <clears throat> We have, do we really want to discuss this, Robin? Well, it's we're putting it on a sign, okay? We took the bus sign off and we left something on there. We don't know what it is. Well, I think I know what it is. And I'm not sure it's appropriate. So I, I keep the butterfly. But I'm saying, is it, I'm asking, is it appropriate for the song? i just asking. I, that, the butterfly didn't. Oh, you know what? It wasn't on the original sign. What is, because we don't usually have descriptions of the sign. Oh yeah, so you can take that off. Yeah, because the original sign did not have that reference. So, okay, so those easy. three things on the bottom acquired. Yeah, they're off, they're off. The they're ARB off. did not approve those words on those. I, yeah. 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 If they want something different, they have to come back to you. But okay. without that, th that, those three words will come off. Yeah, I didn't, it didn't look familiar to me. Could you bring it back up? Just. Yeah, I will. Just. Thanks. Go ahead. I just. We, we I wanted to, to double check. So what the original signs showed, can you see that? Yeah. It didn't have any words like that. Usually it doesn't have um, descriptions of the service. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like a hardware store. You don't have 17 things that they sell. Yeah. Right. So Especially when we don't know what was writing there. So we will approve the Metro Physical Therapy um, without any wor additional wording below. Yeah. I think the sign looks board. better without the tagline. It's it's neater, cleaner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. No wording. It's not usual that we do those descriptions. Yeah. It's usually okay. the business name, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. So let's we'll prove it with those three words removed. Thank you. Obviously, if they want something different, they actually have to go back to the Z, the A or B, because those words weren't there. And back to you. Okay. If you are inclined, I will. I will make a motion. Motion, 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 for, motion. motion for sign approval. Second. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by Robin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Extensions? I heard you first, Robin. It's okay. I didn't see your hand. <laughs> I think uh, I have to be nice at your last last meeting. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, Claire, uh, are you going to do 12 Foster? Yeah. Item four? Uh -huh. So this one I went to inspect and it's in good order. Um, so this is to set the maintenance bonds uh, for the amount of $4,600 based on landscaping. That was the amount of about $13,800. So maintenance for, bonds for two years. Fun. Yep. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian. Second. Second by Craig. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Six, yes. Aye. Now we've got the Hampton Business District clear. We do. And with this. Bond. Yes, Krista McKay, please. So likewise, I went to the site for Hampton Business District. Uh, in this case, I thought they needed some more vegetation. So we asked for uh, some about 24 additional evergreens to be placed along that buffer um, along that side. So we're gonna have that. That's gonna be a modification of the landscape plan. In addition, uh, there's gonna be some additional landscaping between this site and I'll show you on a plan. Um, yeah, there this, wasn't anything in the packet that I saw, so. Yeah, we just recently got this plan, I think yesterday. So I just wanted to. Uh, is this for the back building or the Amazon building? The Amazon building. So they're very close. Uh, they're just doing some cleanup on the site. But yeah, in this buffer, I've asked for additional um, evergreen vegetation. Because in, in a couple spots like this and this, there was uh, just um, some deciduous trees, deciduous shrubs. I thought it would be warranted to have a more extensive evergreen, very similar to the one that's uh, to the east of here, or <laughs> south of here, I should say. So I've asked for 24 additional plants there, and then the applicants and us discussed some additional plantings between this site and the other site that's 
to here. So we've added these 75 evergreens in this location. So that would be a modification to the site plan to allow for the additional landscaping, which we like plants. So more plants, the better. And then to set uh, the maintenance bond uh, for the, uh, the landscaping as installed. And um, then one additional item. So if you remember with the original site plan, there was a caveat that um, $100,000 bonds would be um, put up to ensure that the, the traffic was not impacting um, the roadway in that intersection. So that would be also a performance bond that you would set. And we could do this next at the next meeting, but um, it's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, setting that amount that was decided in the original decision. So those are the three items for your consideration. And, and Krista McCabe is present. Claire, totally off this specific subject, but just okay. to remind me, do they put in um, the beginnings of charging stations? Yes. Or have they been actually put in? No. The beginnings of them and they're capped off. Okay. They, they want to come, they'll have to come back for review and approval of the charging stations. I just, I couldn't remember. And I, I'm seeing that there's- We encouraged it. They've talked about it, but yeah. they don't They don't have, uh, there's more infrastructure, I think, to be included. Kristen can talk more about this if you want to ask her. Yeah. But well, I think I, there's more infrastructure with that to be- I included. was just reading that there's a dearth of- of charging stations on Long Island, and we have the highest percentage of electric cars. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Kristen, yeah. welcome. Uh, did you did you need to add anything? You heard the no, resolution. No, Claire, Claire got it correct. the The utility infrastructure was installed because it was all subsurface, so mm -hmm. they've been stubbed uh, at the end of each of the parking stalls at which time, you know, Amazon wants to come back to install those charging stations, we'll be back before you. But at least the, 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 the main infrastructure won't have to be ripped up again. Yeah, it, and it was vast. So it yeah. would have been a nightmare to do it after the fact. So it was planned, you know, as part of the initial uh, development of the site. Uh, Claire said, are those three gonna be rolled into one resolution or do we have to adopt three Resolution because you got a bond. Got I think I do three, if you don't mind. Three. Okay. Yeah. The first one is to set the maintenance bond. Is that can, can I ask a question before we before oh. do the resolution? Yeah. Claire, uh, can you just give us a really quick uh, or give me a quick update? What is that maintenance bond for traffic affecting the area? How is that supposed to work? Yeah, so there's a little bit more to it than just the hundred thousand dollars, right? What does the hundred thousand dollars guarantee? That would be to guarantee if you wanted to do any improvements to that intersection, such as changing the signalization. Um, is, this, is this which intersection is this? The existing traffic, yes. traffic light? Yes. Okay. And exactly. I think the issue uh, might be with the school. Yeah, there was questions because of the BOCES. And we weren't able to get a clear picture of what was going on in that section, how much it would increase. So this was the, the uh, back, you know, giving the, the board protection, the community protection by having the bonds if we have to go back and do more studies or such. Am I correct, Claire? Uh, yes. And specifically, just let me, I can explain it. George, this is George's language, so he's going to definitely understand this. Um, where the project comes is built, which it is now, and starts to operate, but operates at a steady state. So, you know, it's gonna come up to speed. Um, you know, it'll, it'll yeah. go through a season yeah. and then it'll come to steady state. And then after it's recognized that it's at steady state, it will then um, be a study for a period of a year. And then the planning board is gonna hire consultants, probably the one who assisted in their first application. And then um, uh, he would then analyze that study and see if there's any other work that needs to be done, which is why the $100,000 is being held. You know, um, we can definitely have more of a discussion on this and we could do this at the next meeting and then hold off on the $100,000. It's up to you. 
Um, we, I probably would want to make sure we have that process in place that we're not coming back to you every time, you know, we hire McLean or they started steady state, or maybe you want that update. So, you know, this is our first time doing something like this, which is kind of looking at things after it's built. Christine, do you have to take a look at that language for what triggers what? Because there's a lot of things that are triggering. Maybe we ought to go with just one, the maintenance bond for the landscaping and the landscaping plan and take a look a little bit more of how we trigger the utilization of the bond. Well, the, the, your resolution was pretty um, all encompassing for, for what the analysis should include. So um, I can read the bullet points, but it's a minimum of one year after the facility's full occupancy with full occupancy being defined as the time when the steady state has been achieved. And Amazon defines steady state uh, as generally six to eight weeks, it takes that time to, to ramp up. But you also include um, both peak summertime as well as peak holiday season periods. So this will be a, you know, a, a, a data gathering process at different times to come back to, to give you a complete analysis to determine if there were any um, impacts that require mitigation. So if you'd like, I can offer that we could provide, um, you know, a, a draft scope to review. And then Claire, if you wanted to refer that to LKMA to go back and forth, and then we could, we could present that to the, the planning board at, at a later date, if, if you think that works. But at the time, at this time, really, we just want to post the $100,000 bond um, for the maintenance, uh, excuse me, the performance bond so that we can, it's a, it's a condition of the certificate of occup occupancy that we're trying to get by the end of the month. Okay. And so they have a bond. We're going to make sure that they do it because we have the money. So that that is an instrument to make sure that, you know, we're following your conditions and, and the intention. Chris, I'll go through that. Yeah, I would be comfortable with that because I don't want to hold up that, but I would be more comfortable with having a greater definition of the triggering and the resolution, maybe some attachment. I, I, I think you mean, right? just recommend it. I think it's perfect. Thank you. I was just I was just curious because I hadn't heard of that. Um, I didn't know there was that uh, mechanism in there to look at traffic and impacts. Um, you know, I think one of the bigger one of the big impact, bigger impacts there could be all the trucks coming and going. Uh, whether they actually achieve the time frame that they're looking to come in and enter or not. And because again, you hear her, you hear stories about Amazon and other facilities, especially nowadays where trucks are lining up, you know, for hours waiting to get loaded or unloaded. And how is that going to impact traffic leaving the site and where and where, did, where they're leaving from, among everything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the planning board's concern. So very valid. Okay, thanks. Okay. So if everybody's comfortable, three resolutions, landscaping so modification, maintenance bond, and then performance bond. So the first one is landscape modification, correct? Yep. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Robin, second by Greg, all in favor, aye. Aye. Extensions, six yes. The second one is just the maintenance bond. Do we have a dollar figure, Claire? No? I can't <laughs> According to whatever I mean, Claire says, it's it is. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. That's yeah, lots it's, of it's, money. <laughs> Two hundred and sixteen thousand. Two hundred sixteen thousand. Yep. We motion for the bond. Motion. Motion by Robin. Second by Gloria. And all in favor. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Extensions. Uh, six yes, one absent. And uh, the third one's for for the traffic bond. Correct. Okay. Do we motion. Yep. Motion for the traffic. Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second. Second by Robin, all in favor, aye. Opposed, abstentions, six yes, one absent. Great, thank you. All right. Thank you. Are you gonna keep going with Connor or Friedlander? Keep going. All right. And this one, I'm sorry, I just gave to you yesterday, um, but you're familiar with the site. This is the Connor Friedlander um, parcel. The resolution. Here's the plan. So this is a proposal for us 
nine, I'm sorry, seven lots on this, uh, for all these properties, which uh, started off as uh, nine lots is what I see in the record. Um, and my proposal, the, I can just go through the pre-app report if that's helpful. Sure. Start that, go. Uh, so it's seven lots. It's on the Montauk Highway, Bridgehampton. It's got freshwater wetlands adjacent. It's in the agricultural overlay district in the New York State archaeologically sensitive area. The total area is about 13.32. I think it's 0.35 actually. So I have that wrong there. Um, it is uh, residential, commercial to the west, north, and east, and residential to the south. And one of the properties is currently improved with a building utilized as a takeout ice cream stand or carvel. Um, preferred plan is a seven lot standard plan. It is in the archaeologically sensitive area and a phase one A and B is required. It's in the Arch Arch um, agricultural overlay district and uh, was historically farms and a referral will be made at the uh, time of the application. Um, probably with a preliminary application actually. It is, uh, it's a major subdivision because there's a road proposed and there's no park requirement for six commercial lots. There is one residential lot proposed. And so there's no additional park um, services being required. So I cite the code. At the pre-app hearing, um, March 24th, there was no public comments and there was no public comments during the 10 day written comment period. Attached is the referrals. Um, that I have, I have to actually open them. Do you want me to read those? Mm -hmm. to you. Claire, while you're doing yep. that, th yep. this is a, a, a totally new pre-app. So it, it's not anything like what we saw before. Correct. It's a, uh, the original one didn't involve as many lots. Uh, that original Connor one was only three lots proposed. In this that case- was, That was the gym. Yeah, that was the gym, okay. exactly. Wipe, yep. that, wipe that out of my mind. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so the referrals, um, we've, we've had referrals from conservation. Um, this is the description uh, of the project. They um, are recommending um, for number one, they're describing it, but they, they think more stringent conservation um, design is warranted. In the case of commercial projects, uh, commercial zoning, majority, there's no requirement for a uh, planned residential development or a cluster. So that is like not a code requirement in this case. Not that you can't ask the applicant to consider it, but in this case, it's not a, a requirement that you have to waive. Um, so, in number two, they're stating that the disturbance level, uh, disturbance limits and clearing is not accurately uh, depicted on the plan. So I've asked for them to update that. And number three is some notations. Number four is, um, they're just describing the uh, Telus Pont as an impaired water body. And then just stating that uh, the, the non-points stormwater runoff and agricultural activities contributed to that. Um, number five is related to the slopes. In the case of lots that are greater than 40,000 square feet, the, uh, the slopes is 30% and they have shown those on the property. It's not 20% as she cited there. And number six is the natural, um, so they recommended here a cluster that's I related to number one. They would like to see a cluster on the plans on the property. And then number seven is uh, in absent a cluster, they'd like to see a 200 foot conservation easement on the property to protect the wetlands. Uh, there's already a conservation easement on the property. We'll discuss that in a bit in a minute. But um, they also recommending an IA system um, on-site water treatment. And I think that you would, you would agree with that, that would be appropriate. So uh, the next comments were related to the fire district. They'd like to see a hydrants and that would be on the west side of this road that's proposed so that I have included. 
And the town engineer has uh, several comments that have to be addressed by the applicant prior to the submission of the next phase. So that's those. And then the town um, fire marshal also had some comments related to um, access and fire hydrants. And those are um, access here and then the fire hydrants that would be appropriate. So close that. Um, I'll go back to... Um, Procedural question, please. Sure. When the conservation board suggests that there are things or items missing or improperly cited mm -hmm. on a pre-app, does that mean the pre-app is not complete or what procedurally happens? The pre-app is a guide. Your pre-app at the end point is a guide for them to proceed to the um, actual review stages, which is in this case, preliminary and final. Sometimes it's just final, but that's the application. Um, that's where you want to make sure that the wetlands line was accurate, um, but no, it would not stop you know, the review. So of the pre going back now and at addressing uh, I think it was one and two seemed very much more serious. And uh, one was more, you mean the town, the uh, conservation board's uh, notes. Number one was more of a description. Was, was one, I, I, I might have the numbers wrong. I, I don't, um, I'm sorry. I, I no, might, no, and I'm sorry. It's taking so long to get back to it. Um, number one was more of a description of the application, right? So the first part of this, accordingly, more stringent conservation design is warranted in order to protect these areas. So I think that leads oh, I'm sorry, to number the two. cluster. Yeah, number, two. Hmm? number two, which says that the they're outdated and insufficient for proper review, the site disturbance limits, should mm -hmm. that be revised prior to approving this even in the pre-app? Yeah, definitely. That's just notations. Um, because you're not approving a pre-app, you're giving guidance in a report. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but that's very important information for the, yeah. for the next phase, absolutely. So I have those as conditions. Okay, thank you. There, a background question. Sure. Um, when the, the conservation board is saying it should be clustered to mitigate the potential effects of being so close to Kellis Pond, mm -hmm. but you're saying that this zoning doesn't require that. Right. Um, is why, why would this still be considered highway business if it's, if it could potentially impact wet Kellis Pond? I mean. It's a good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the good question why the town board decided that it still should be highway business here, right? So um, probably they looked at this and said <laughs> you could still achieve development on these properties and meet all required setbacks and protect that pond. Isn't the rear residential, doesn't the zoning line cut through the back of this? It does. Uh, that's the best way to show you is probably the aerial, right? Here we go. So this portion is the residential back here. And then this is highway business. And then a good part of this prop, these two properties have a conservation easement already on them um, that was taken basically from the wetlands at the time. And it's now represents between 80 and hundred and plus feet of a conservation setback from the wetlands. So we already have that in some ways, but they're asking for 200 feet, which in essence would take over this, this residential parcel that they're proposing here. So this residential, this is entirely residential. This is the, the line here. And this would, if you took, you can see that this is the, hun, the conservation easement here, but if you took 200 feet, you'd, you wouldn't have a parcel there. I'm back again to the conservation report. I apologize for having not printed it out, but uh, going to the last numbers, 
on it. I think it's the next page. Um, the plan commercial development of PCD, is that a zoning requirement? I, we don't have that term in our code. Okay, where did they get that? She made it up. <laughs> okay. We yeah. have a PRD, which is planned residential. I know, oh, this yeah. is the planned commercial. That's why when you said it doesn't require a cluster, I'm looking at number seven saying, what are they talking about? What's at one time there was a PD, PDD. No, yeah, I know PDD, yeah. but this says PCD. Well, they close. They were off by one one letter. <laughs> well, we got rid of the, that letter, so I don't know yeah. where they got this one. But it's saying, maybe they didn't get the memo. But it's saying two hundred feet wide easements. Where are they getting this from? Does anyone know? I I think they're just requesting that this is uh, very valuable wetlands and. Can we get a 200 foot conservation easement? Which I don't. Can we just send a little note back to conservation saying, what? Uh, uh, because maybe <laughs> they, uh, uh, because they use words, planned commercial development, and then put the parens and put the initials as if it exists. If it is, exists, it's maybe something we should look at. If it doesn't exist or it's something being proposed, Maybe we should look at it, but I, we should find out. Conservation usually gives a good report. Mm -hmm. I mean, they usually accurate. Don't make yeah, up usually stuff. accurate. Yep. Yeah, they don't usually make up stuff. Could we just find out what they were inferring? Because that would be interesting. I can ask. Sure. Exactly. They offered further guidance, Robin. Yes. <laughs> further guidance. <laughs> further guidance. So based on the referrals, which I thought were we're good. Um, there's, there's definitely some issues here. Um, the applicant shall process, shall proceed to the preliminary uh, subdivision application stage, uh, submission of yield and proposed subdivision plan. Number two is prior to deeming the preliminary application complete, secret will be required to be completed. Mm -hmm. Issues include potential traffic from future development, impact to wetlands, groundwater, archeological, I said, et cetera. I don't know if you identified any others as we went through this. So I say to address the cluster um, is that the application does not include a PRD as a majority of the lots are non-residential and not required. Unless there is a PCD and we just don't know about it. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, the number four and five, talk about access and uh, we'd want all these lots to be attached to each other and and have easements um, if they did not know their developments and this proceeded and received final I'd suggest um, general future cross access uh, covenants um, in place to allow the parking and pedestrian easements to be developed in the future when you know the uses on the property um, that's number four number five is the curb cut you know if this continues to be developed. Oh no, is the proposed curb cut on um, the flag lot number six. This was an issue. I watched your meeting from the 24th and uh, you had brought up this issue of the access to this. I think you'd want to have more information before you you said that this might be an access to access these properties, um, what the design would be or where this location is, you know, in terms of how it lines up with maybe the um, the development to the north, those kinds of things. So I kind of say uh, the proposed curb cut on the proposed flag strip of lot number six will need to be studied. And then I further go so on that the Carvel lot, if if the Carvel lot is not redeveloped, the parcels curb cut will be closed and access will be from another location. We don't want to leave that as like an open issue. Um, as development is happening in the round it. What do you think about that? Any comments? Maybe you can then, close up a curb cut, that's great. Yeah, right. But Claire, uh, what happened to the whole Equinox complex that was- mm -hmm. I we, know. It's going so, to hold, didn't we- Walked did, away. Didn't that? That's gone away, right? We, we, we spent many, 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 many hours. Yes. Are there any other developments in this immediate area? 
Anything else on the drawing board? Oh, do you want me to say that as a traffic? Yeah. Uh, under the traffic? Yeah. Including, so maybe under number two? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, you have from future development. I'm just asking, is there anything? Not that I know of. I guess future or near, nearby developments, maybe just allude to it. So in case there is anything else pops up, okay. take a look at it. Right. Because you do have the marshals going in. That's right. That, that's in. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, well, it's, yeah, I was I was there. I, I wasn't in the store. I passed by. Okay, so we, we should be looking to see how that is going to affect the logger jam in this area. This is one light down. Yeah, exactly. So existing developments and uh, any future developments. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you've got the um, the, the next light down. The, the hotel and new restaurant, so. Mm -hmm. Oh no, they gave up on that. They did. They gave what? up. They gave up on uh, Loaves and Fishes is over. Yeah. It's over. Really? Yeah. yeah. What, oh wow. Yeah. Yep. Claire, you may have it covered here in number two, talking about traffic, but of course, when, if that, signal becomes a four-way signal, you know, channeling the traffic out of the, the new development, um, that will increase congestion on Montauk Highway. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you want to put, you know, impacts and changes to the signal, or maybe that's kind of covered under your umbrella statement there, but certainly something we'll have to watch out for. Well, that was one of the big issues with the, um, the gym with with the classes all coming and going at the same time a major con traffic concern that we had right now i can specifically talk about the traffic lights uh under the issues include potential traffic future development impacts on existing development and future development in the area um and then it impacts on um existing levels uh, yeah. level of service, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, to me, the, the part of the traffic challenges we we're having is when we we're looking at each application in a silo and it, as more stuff is done nearby, the cumulative effect is really hard to address. And we, I think that's something that should be in a, a flag for, for us in general. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. I'll just go back. I just didn't want to. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you say it, but it. Yeah, we can say uh, cumulative impacts. Mm hmm. Yeah. It'll be all under number two. Yes. Okay. Anything else? I gone? So um, we talked about five, six is the IA system or connected to a sewage treatment plant. So there may be a big development here. So they need a sewage treatment plant. So I get the option. And this is just the, the labeling uh, that the wetlands, the conservation had noticed, noted. And I just said, if the wetlands uh, line is more than three years, they'd have to update that. Um, here's the 200 foot conservation easement from the wetlands line. Um, I, that's not typical in, in an application. Um, we could ask conservation for more information about why they're recommending the requirement, if you'd like. I just describe here the existing conservation easement on the property, so. Well, can we say something to the effect that we are concerned about um, this fairly large commercial development adjacent to a, an, an, an endangered wetlands? I mean, that's uh -huh. just a general statement to sort of let the applicant know that you really better, you really should think about this. Okay. Large potential for, yeah, future development. So instead of maybe this, I'll say that. 
instead of the 200 foot, I'll state the planning board's concern with future development so close to. Um, I think just add, add another number. Okay. I wouldn't take anything out. You've you've done so much work on this. I I think each thing should be noted. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll add a new note about that. And then nine is note the existing development and clearing disturbance on the preliminary plat. That was your point, um, Robin. Mm -hmm. And so we'll add that. And the slopes, uh, the 30% slopes shown are in conformance to the town code. So that is ap that's applicable. Um, the fire suppression, which is the hydrant and compliance with the fire um, Department of Public Safety, which is the fire marshal, town engineer. He specifically references at the bus shelter will be relocated soon yet added. And then I'm sorry, number 14 is preliminary stage, but I say that at the beginning, so I can omit number 14. There'll be a new number 14, which is the planning board's concern. How about Any other questions from the board? For your consideration of adopting the pre-app report. The applicant's representative is here. He's uh, from Areas Design. I'm sorry, Steve, if you wanted to speak on the application. Any comments from the applicant? Uh, no, we, we're reviewing the, the comments we just we received as well. Uh, no, no comments right now. I think you know, Claire covered everything. Uh, we will note that we, we did uh, update the wetland flagging. Um, last year and and uh, the environmental division did go out and confirm the flagging um, so that was done and we've gotten updated surveys uh, new new topography or updated topography uh, but we'll just we're going through the report and um, addressing the items could you just state your name just for the oh sorry Steve Naroda with Aris design okay great so our action then is to adopt the pre the pre yes, as amended report. as yep. amended. Very good. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Gloria. Second by George. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We have six yes. Thank you. Thank you. So in this case, oh, let's see who I got here. Christine is. Would, um, is Christine Brian, here? Would Brian Egan? Want to come I'm here? Sure. Would he? Wayne. Um, it's actually Wayne. Oaks. Wayne is Wayne. here too. Wayne is here. Okay. Yep. So if you could let Wayne Bruin in, and Brian, Brian in. and Brian Egan. And um, just while they're they're coming in, uh, I think they can hear us anyway. I was able um, to speak with Brian. Um, uh, Dennis, if you want me to go through the board, what yep. the conversations I've had. So. Sure. Um, I had spoken to um, Jackie uh, during the week, um, so just to fill the board in. And if you recall, uh, Wayne's client was asking for relief from a covenant restriction that was put in place by the planning board back in the 80s, I think it was. Um, and it was before incorporation of Sagaponic Village. They later incorporated. Um, we also changed the restrictions um, and have been allowing outside the village, but inside the town um, accommodations to relieve the covenants from a 25% to 35% um, in terms of clearing. And uh, Wayne's client was trying to sell a piece of property and one of these old planning board covenants came <coughs> up on a piece within the village of Sagaponic. So since we were the authorizing board of the um, initial covenant, the relief request came to us. Um, we kind of felt like it really now is within the jurisdiction of Sagaponic. They have adopted all other of our zoning regulations. If they want an APOD and those restrictions, they are free to do that. They have not chosen to do that um, and suggested that um, maybe we confer with them whether and how they felt about relief of this covenant. Um, in that, in the interim, um, we did hear from several people who um, were uh, both in opposition to the covenant and um, some that were uh, for it. Um, we sent the letter, we sent the request or referral over to SAG, um, Sagaponic Village. They um, gave us a letter that we required clarification on. They came back and said, in the end, we're good if you wanna do the 35%. 
which I think we can all appreciate, however, puts us, was my feeling uh, as a board, in the position where we were taking on um, maintaining the covenant, but really enforcement becomes then an issue and a legal um, issue for us to have to grapple with and deal with um, should there be anything that we have to go and enforce on. So I suggested that we um, were, as in courtesy extended to the Sagaponic Village, we would be happy to keep um, the clearing restriction, we would put it at 35 as they suggested. Um, and in light of that, we would then um, agree with the Sagaponic Village that they would have a third party right of enforcement such that if enforcement became an issue, it wouldn't be on us to have to go and then argue whether or not we had jurisdiction to do this. Um, I believe Wayne's client is already at 34% and doesn't have a problem with the 35%, um, but didn't want to be held up by us trying to wrangle this out with the village. I have been able to speak with Brian Egan. I don't know if he wants to come on here, but I spoke to him before um, and he, he understood um, where I was coming from um, as he understood also where Wayne was coming from and said that he felt that the village would have no problem um, taking on a third party right of enforcement as they didn't, um, they weren't poised to adopt any of those zoning regulations on their own. Um, but certainly appreciated that we were doing 35% and they would be happy to do that. So my suggestion would be as to not hold up Wayne's client if the board is so inclined, um, if we would grant his client's uh, request for an amendment up to the 35%, uh, make it conditional upon an agreement between um, the village and the town entering into um, an IMA, an MOU, however you wanna do it, um, for a, an enforcement, uh, third-party right of enforcement, and Mr. Egan is agreeable to that. Wayne, is that clear you or no? Um, number one, um, I do also had a conversation with Brian, and, and, I, and that's why I forwarded him this link and, and asked him perhaps to attend to maybe clarify that because... Um, He's here. Right, so I'll let Brian speak for himself. He's but not in though. Yeah, I don't see him on the screen. He's not he's here, here. He's in the oh, attendees. He's an attendee, he's on my screen. I spoke with him right before at 12, yeah. I think. So, I'm not quite sure it's um, available. So our client's position is they understand. And so my client purchased a lot with this covenant. It was a vacant lot, got a building permit last early last fall. We made this request October 4th, some seven months ago, and we're, we're here waiting. Our client is, is nearing completion. He wants to be able to sell this new house uh, and not have the question rise with a new buyer as to whether it's 25% or 35%. Um, and we'd like to proceed as, as far as enforcement is concerned, and I provided this question and did a lot of research on this and consulted many municipal attorneys. And, you know, the authority for the village and the town comes from the state law and, and it, it, it only comes from the state law as far as when, how and where and what you can do. And there is a significant question of whether or not the town can delegate or force us to um, get into an agreement whereby we're the only parcel in the village of Sagaponic that would allow the, the village's enforcement of that covenant. Um, that being said, what clouded the issue more importantly was state legislation that occurred last February, February 1st, 2021, which was um, something the village and the town sought, which the state legislature, specific only to the village of Sagaponic, adopted legislation that allows the village of Sagaponic to enforce town agreements that were accepted under section 247 of the general municipal law. The problem with that legislation is all these covenants are not accepted under the general uh, 247 of general municipal law. That's where your ag easements, your conservation easements and open space easements are all adopted and accepted by the town board under those. So here we have specific legislation, the state legislature saw fit to allow that the only way, in my opinion, or, or the way that the village would have authority to enforce such an agreement that was previously uh, obtained by the town of Southampton was by this state legislation. Um, what we're opposed to is, is what Christine is suggesting here is this whole amendment is conditioned on 
the village and the town doing something. And the problem I have with that is, number one, they're, they're, they may never do anything. Number two is, is that we have no time period and no idea what they may do. They may decide that they need the state legislature like this legislation to amend it. You may need an IMA. And you're talking about two municipalities trying to figure that out. What my client is willing to accept is, is that the board can amend it. And it's basically the status quo as far as who can enforce it. It remains the status quo. It's just as you do in all your covenants. And by the way, we're, this is not the only map in the village of Sagaponic that the planning board approved with covenants. And this happens to be a clearing covenant, but there's many other covenants and many other maps, perhaps thousands of lots that are affected with covenants. No further subdivision, underground utilities, common driveways, all of which currently the village of Sagaponic has no authority to enforce, but the town of Southampton does with an action in Supreme Court. So I, I think the point is, and I appreciate the issue, but really our client is doesn't want to be hamstrung with this, what could be a political issue between the village and, and the town as to how and where and when. But if we could maintain the status quo, whereby the covenant right now can only be enforced by the town board with an action in Supreme Court, that would remain. It just would be with the amendment, which is consistent with every other amendment you've done for similar clearing requirements. So that's, I would agree with what Christine says. Let's, if it's possible, adopt the resolution today that allows the amendment to 30, from 35%, uh, from 25% to the 35%. And let the town board and the village of Sagaponic board of trustees figure out how and where not only this covenant, but all the covenants everywhere in the village could perhaps be enforced by the village of Sagaponic. So, and I can, if I could, I, I appreciate um, Wayne's position. I mean, but we could, and I've, I've spoken to Brian, we, we both feel that our boards would be amenable to entering into it, whether it is this one covenant in terms of clearing restrictions, or we do with all clearing restrictions. Because quite frankly, I think it's an unfair burden that you would be placing on the town of Southampton to have to go to the board, to have to start a litigation, to go through an entire litigative process to try and figure out if we can enforce something when we can right now have you, uh, the Sagaponic Village take over the enforcement angle of this. And we can do that by resolution on May 24th. And we can certainly put language in the conditions of approval that say, since this is a condition, that it puts the onus on us because we have every incentive to move on this. We do not want to be hamstrung with these enforcements. To puts the onus on us to have to move diligently to obtain such approval of an MOU or an IMA, however Brian and I think is best to proceed within you know 30 days, within 45 days. Otherwise, you're relieved of it. But I think it's unfair to ask the board to take on the burden of having the enforcement of this and the legal responsibility that goes along with that without allowing them to be able to work with the village as they should. Well, Christine, couldn't we, couldn't we draft, instead of making it contingent upon that, the IMA or whatever mechanism you envision, couldn't, couldn't we uh, incorporate language that, that um, allows or contemplates enforcement without specifically saying we're not, you know, I don't know, that, I think this, I'm feeling this is beyond you know, the scope of our board and also it, it, it holds it's, up not, his... it's not beyond the scope of your board, but it is beyond the scope of Wayne's client. I mean, this has other implication for this board, for all of any of these lots that want to come and ask the same thing of you. We're going to have the same thing. So, I mean, certainly this board and the town has the incentive to resolve this as quickly as possible, such that this does not become a continuing discussion that we have to have because Wayne's client you know, raises the issue, but it, you know, it's got far more reaching implications than just his client. So you just have to keep that in mind. And it's well who's, beyond who's enforcing it now? I just wanna make sure you understand that it's every covenant, not just clearing covenant. We would probably do exactly, it's gonna be a litigative process because right now it's within the village. So we would have to assert enforcement. Somebody would probably object to that. And it would become a litigated process that at our expense or the Southampton taxpayers expense that we would have to do for something that the village is asking us to do. If, if they have a genuine interest in my understanding is they do, they'd like to see the clearing restriction at 35%. 
then and they are willing to take over the enforcement of that. They understand that and it appears as though they're willing to do that. If that changes, then, you know, then we'll have the language in there that relieves you from that. But right now we have every incentive to move expeditiously to resolve this. So Francine, before did you, did I hear you mention some sort of um, time provision or sunsetting provision? Yeah. I mean, is it, if this is how we're anticipating it going, which uh, I think Brian and I, and I wish, uh, you know, I hate speaking for him, but I'm assuming he will raise his hand and say if I'm saying anything incorrectly. But if we're both feeling as though our boards are going to be amenable to this, I, I mean, I can be on the next um, work session um, and, and speak to my board, and then we can have a resolution for their next town board meeting. And I, I'm assuming that Brian would be able to do the same. So you're envisioning like a 90 day provision? Is that? Do you think that's I, I was thinking like 30 days, but if you want to split the baby and do 45, I'm good with that too. However, you want to do it. Wayne, I, we have incentive I, if we I can't like follow 30 through. days. 30 days. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> you are so Claire, are you picking all this up? <laughs> right notes. Because you're gonna have to Father, drift, you're gonna have to work that's with wrong. Christine on the language, but yep. we're envisioning uh, amending the covenant to 35. Percent yep. with the uh, with the uh, thirty day window to enter into an intermunicipality and grievance for enforcement. Uh -huh. That's what I'm days. hearing. Uh, I'm, I'm we'll really having specific language with this because it sounds like we're legislating on the revision of a covenant, and I'm really having a problem. What do you mean? It sounds like we're doing a negotiation between the village and the town, negotiating enforcement, which is far reaching, which seems to be a legislative um, direction on a covenant amendment affecting one piece of property. I, I'm very uncomfortable with this. Tell me, so tell me what is making you uncomfortable because it's like enforcement's not legislation. So that's the first thing. But if, if, if you have a group of, um, you have a group of properties, potentially that could come in. You can say you have 30 properties that could come in. We all know that the planning board did this, but they did it before there was an incorporation. Since Correct. that time, Sagaponic adopted all our zoning codes and all our provisions, except for the APOD, which is where we got these clearing restrictions from, which is why they were put okay. as conditions. Stopping right there for a second, Christine. Forgetting about the APOD, are, are, is Sagaponic enforcing their own zoning? They're, Wayne, you shook your head both ways. You can't do that to me. No, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say, or do they have clearing? They do not, but they do have their own zoning regulations. So they have their own zoning and they're enforcing their own zoning. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Right. I mean, what other what other covenants or types of covenants were you concerned about? You said there's hundreds of other covenants. The same clearing restrictions. Just clearing restrictions. Those are the ones that we're yes, worried about. If, if I may, the only one we've asked to amend, but there are several other clauses in these declaration of covenants. And not only this map, but every map that was approved by the town planning board, probably that is it lies in the village of Sagaponic. We've got to remember that enforcement of a covenant is not a code enforcement issue. Mm -hmm. Enforcement of a covenant is requires the town board to authorize litigation in Supreme Court. <clears throat> that's currently the way it is. And that's the part of the problem here is the town board would be asked to bring litigation for enforcing a covenant in the village of Sagaponic. That being said, that's the part of delegation that is problematic. And I believe that's why the state legislature did what they did with the conservation easements. Um, that being said, I don't know, and, and it isn't a common practice. And, and I think there may be the opportunity for municipalities to talk about um, you know, uh, agreements between the municipalities, but again, that is the town board with the village board. Um, so I, I just think it's, if you amend the covenant, it remains enforceable by the town, just like the current covenant and just like everybody else's covenant th throughout the village. Um, they can only be enforced by the town. So why single out my one lot owner to be contingent on this and, and his title to continue to be uh, 
you know, uh, marred or better yet, I guess the question is what happens if, if this is going to be a sunset. So the town board and the village has 30 days to enact either this intermunicipal agreement or whatever legislation is necessary to allow them to uh, the village to enforce covenants. If not, it's just going to be the 35 percent as the typical amendment. Is that what and it's to offer? and it's to enforce the clearing restrictions. Right. And we can do it a blanket because I think as it pertains to this board in particular, their main focus was the fact that you're the right Sagaponic has its own um, provisions, but they don't have clearing restrictions. And that's something this board has deeply been involved with and championed in terms of water quality protection and the rest of it. So yeah, that was there. And they felt like they were doing a courtesy and getting the input of the village, since it's within their village boundaries, what they wanted. They wanted to keep this, and the village is very aware of the uh, what comes along with having to litigate and, and the necessity of that, perhaps. And so they were also willing to bear their responsibility in taking enforcement should it become an issue. See, Robin, in effect, we're, side, we're sidestepping the whole enforcement issue. We're just basically putting our plan, planning blinders on and, and adopting a resolution that we do have done dozens and dozens of times bringing the older covenant into the i know uh, but you're, you're putting a pro, you're putting a condition on this on this we're just stating, this is in the village we don't usually do them in the village yeah that's but i'm saying, them outside the village i it, it's not then it's just it's not a condition comment. it is if the town and the village do not come to either a memo of understanding then it's status quo then it's status quo then it's 35 percent so it's really it's thirty five percent either way. Either we come to a conclusion. It's just a matter of whether or not we share the responsibility in enforcement. Well, and what Wayne's client, sorry. Yeah, I, I apologize. I'm just trying yeah. to understand why this yeah. is conditioned onto Wayne's client. I okay, because Wayne's certain. client, even if Wayne's client is the only one right now, Wayne himself has testified to the fact that there are dozens. Of yep. properties similarly situated that will probably come in and ask for the same thing. So right now you're looking at this and you're saying to yourself, we understand the practicalities with, we understand the, the reasons for doing it and why the village wants to keep the clearing restrictions. We also understand our limitations in terms of enforcement and the practicalities and costs associated with that. Therefore, village, we're willing to honor what you're saying and give them the 35%, as you suggest, you're bearing the responsibility and buy-in it's like having skin in the game that you're going to do the enforcement and and that's how we proceed moving forward not just with wayne's client it's going to be anybody that comes in that's why wayne's client may have raised the issue but they haven't been singled out it's just circumstance okay so in 30 days if government does its usual and does nothing or doesn't move and it's status quo and he's got the 35 percent with what 35 percent. either way he gets 35 by who <laughs> the same what? person entity that's enforcing it today. What? Excuse me, Wayne. The, the same party that's enforcing it today. No one's enforcing it today. Nobody's enforcing if we I mean. had to enforce it, we would bear the liability for that. The obligate, the legal obligation, the legal expense, everything would be on the town. And, and whether or not we'd be successful, I don't know. Because and that's the status quo. Right, that's the status quo, and I'm trying to avoid that. So this kind of pushes the issue. Get those two parties to agree, Wayne. I, I I I agree with what Robin is trying to say. It's really I'm not sure. a condition on my <laughs> client because if it, 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 you just want to acknowledge that you're going to try in 30 days because at the end of the 30 days I get 35 percent and and if the town doesn't do anything I get 35 percent no matter what. So it's really not a condition. It isn't. The only other option, Robin, is we could we could wipe out the covenant. That's good too. You can do that also. I don't know if that's the board is, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive. How does that, how does that fit with our goals of acting for protection? Exactly. exactly. I, I, it just seems to me that Sagaponic, okay, is wanted to become a village. And somehow this whole issue of clearing restrictions slipped through where, where nobody dealt with it. And now somebody's property is burdened. A, a lot of people's property is burdened. And everybody's going, the individual rights of a property owner is what's upsetting me here, that we're, 
we're dealing uh, with this one. I'm going to ask a, ba a basic question. If, why didn't Sagaponic adopt clearing, clearing code? That, that, that was suggested. But quite right. honestly, if they don't have to go through that, why would they? If you are going to stand up for your covenants. Yes, it's, a, it's the right thing to do to protect the yeah, but, but that's 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 a policy. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But that it begs the question. If they want these enforced, if they want these in place, why aren't they doing it? Yeah. But they're not. So so they're asking you to do it. And that was my point. And if you would like to not do it and you would like to uh, just keep it and give them the 35% and keep the expense on us and keep the burden on us, you can do that. That's definitely in your purview to do. I was trying to protect the board and the town in the future from bearing the sole responsibility. But nothing, for precludes, but nothing precludes the town and the village from getting together. This covenant amendment is not going to force the town and the village to do anything. It just gives more incentive right now, and it gives you a precedent upon which to act in the future. If I'm understanding this correctly, we can wipe out the covenant on the town level. The village can adopt the covenant mm -hmm. as well as the enforcement. Yes. That's the cleanest move, right? It would be, but, yeah. But well, they is, can't adopt the covenant, no. They, they can, can write their, their own? own? They, can, they, they can amend the code, but they can't force a property right. owner to, enter right. to amend the declaration. That's true. That's true. I don't understand. Can you explain that a little clearer? I'm the sorry. covenant is a legal instrument entered voluntarily by the property owner. Yeah. And that was done years ago. And when the subdivision is filed, the, the, the new village can't turn to the property owner and say, hey, we want you to amend that covenant that you voluntarily uh, recorded, you know, in the past. That's they true. could enact a legislative code that says clearing should not exceed 35%. But in the meantime, there's probably going to be a gap and this property is going to go probably go ahead and clear cut his land before it's so there. so um there could be a grandfathering then in other words it, it, current how do i phrase this current applications would not have to adhere to the new code written by the village no current current ones would probably there'd probably be non-conforming ones that were yeah as they were before okay um they adopted that this, this right. is really a much, this is just a really a broader policy decision yeah. for this board to make. And, you know, you, you have to think about what, if you understand the pros and the cons of all of it, it's really just, you know, this is not, you're, you're not, you're not going to be uh, chastised either, either and the way. Village, the village wants us to, it wants the town involved the in the enforcement we level? Yes, we, we asked the village what they wanted us to do. They asked us, um, they wanted the 35%, but they weren't ready to, um, from what I can take, and again, I hope Brian would raise his hand if I'm representing something correctly. They were not willing to take at this point the steps to initiate their own clearing restrictions. That's a, that's a very big undertaking. And so therefore, they Brian felt that his board would happily take over the enforcement of them if we would keep the 35%. Because they don't, have, they don't have the ability for enforcement, right? So, I don't know. They, they must because they do have a zoning code that people comply with. So I would just—they have enforcement. The big powers. impediment, um, the big impediment, Craig, is you can't just slap a clearing restriction. You typically get the moratorium enacted, so people don't rush and clear cut their last. Then you need a planning study. You need consultants. It's, it's a six, eight right. month process, maybe even longer. So, that's so it's our. I mean, it's our goal as the board to protect the covenant because we want to protect the apod obviously right yeah um, well that's, your, that's what you're thinking about yeah um geez this is this is more like a a legal i know than the planning board maneuver right. that's why I'm, I'm rather I uncomfortable up with it let's be planners let's grab that 35 percent and yeah. let the legal dudes hash it out and yeah let the legislative that that's my sentiment yeah so you're saying with the condition or without the condition, Dennis? With with the condition, but the con it's not con it's not a contingency. If they it, it, it's it doesn't hold up the process. They get thirty days, <clears throat> and that puts the onus on the legis on the town and the village to get together and 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 formalize that mechanism. And if they don't, we're, we're still where we're at. It. We're, we're with at least a better covenant, thirty five percent, as opposed to no covenant. Yeah. I think that's that's cutting the baby in half, but 
it hopefully it won't hurt. <laughs> so we were trying to be fair. We were trying to, you know, work together to come up with some resolve. It really kind of got everybody where they needed to be without overburdening, you know, you all basically as the planning board, assuming all the responsibility for this when uh -huh. the village has skin in the game now. Bottom line, Gloria, the groundwater doesn't know the municipal boundaries. Let's focus on, let's protect that groundwater. I, I'm 100% for that. You and know, that. the legislators do their thing. Yeah. So, my lawyering side of me is. Uh, <laughs> I'll right. be quiet. You'll be gone. You, you I, I, wait for this. <laughs> I'll put it there, Robin. You can sue the board and. Um... <laughs> I, I'm just the lawyering side of me just sees a precedent here on doing policy. It's in a covenant, and it's I'm just knee jerk reacting against it. I understand the good intentions here. You don't have to do it. You guys can say no. You guys can just give the thirty five percent. You don't have to. I'm, yeah. I'm, no, no, no. I'm just saying. I, but I don't want the board if they if it doesn't if it's not a policy you want to go with or you don't want to uh, or you feel like it's going too far. You're absolutely. This is not. <laughs> you know, a do or die situation. It's, it's, it was, it's good intentions trying to get you. What's going to make you comfortable, Robin, as an attorney? You, we don't, we, we can be silent. We could just go to 35% and leave it. I, I, I guess as I, I, you know, I, I haven't done the research that Christine has done. So I, I feel very uncomfortable talking ahead, but these kind of conditions and triggering events just set are just, I'm just uncomfortable with it. I understand wanting to hold on to the 35 because nobody took, it, it just fell through the crack or fell through, I don't know how it, it disappeared. Um, I would like to protect the groundwater. I'm just having an attorney's knee jerk reaction, but I will protect the 35% if the board wants to go with the, the condition because yeah. it'll push them along. I understand it, but I'm, you know, the, the condition is is just a, a nudge, if anything else. It's not a contingency. If they don't get things done in 30 days, at least there's no cloud on this title and the, the property owner can move forward. You know, All right. The wording will be such that there won't be a cloud on the title. There's no extension. Right. Nothing else will happen. This poor guy can sell his property. Yeah. And, and can move forward with this project in a, in a good plan with with good planning, the APOD. Wayne, are you comfortable? Well, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm always interested in what the final words would say and, and, and interested with Christine. I mean, essentially the planning board can't condition what the village board or the town board will do. And, and the question is, is it actually a condition or is it just with a note with the understanding that the town board and, you know, and the village board will be encouraged to work out the enforcement process? Um, and, and the problem is, what if they don't? And, you know, but you've done your job just like any other covenant. And the village actually said in their letter, the last letter, we believe this covenant limitation is valuable to be continued and enforced as a planning element to the original creation of the subdivision. And if you think about that, and that's why I was saying before, this is just not a clearing issue. There happens to be only two maps, total of 31 lots that have clearing covenants in the village of Sagaponic. And, and that's probably the reason why they didn't do legislative. It's only those two maps. Practically everything else was farmland or not wooded, uh, or it wasn't in the aquifer because it's south of you know Montauk Highway or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So that being said, it seems like they want that, but they're not addressing the enforcement. This is a discussion that Christine and I and Brian have had in two different phone calls. And I think they're certainly an issue of how and where and what they'll do, but that, that we leave to the town board and, and the village board to, to address. But I think the point is, is that the village wants that, like Christine said, they will you know, try to work it out, but it's not just this one little clearing covenant for, that we're talking about. It's the other covenants that require common driveways, no overhead utilities, no further subdivision. Right now, the village can't enforce any of those. Now, I'll just go back. You might remember about four or five years ago, we had the Daniel Hedges application, a two lot subdivision and the village wanted to preserve a historic structure, but there was a covenant that the planning board imposed on that subdivision saying no further subdivision. Uh, the village couldn't 
enforce that or do anything, but they wanted to make sure that was an impediment, asked the planning board and with my client, both joined and asked the planning board to amend that. And you did. And what resulted was litigation with the neighbor. Um, and it was eventually withdrawn and, and other things. But the point was, you know, there lies in some of the problems, you know, neighbors in this map, you know, part of a common scheme in development have some authority to enforce. Um, so that, that in itself can t continue to take place. But, but these are not but, private covenants, Wayne, excuse me, but these aren't private covenants that they have the ability to enforce. These are covenants that did the planning. Right. There is a common, common law. There's cases out there, common law rights of people on a common scheme in a subdivision having I, standing. But I just read today of many where they didn't. Yeah. So they're, they're, yeah, I read other cases. So that it's up in the air. But the point is, is you know how how this gets enforced. Again, we got to be reminded it's a Supreme Court action, whether the village does it or the, the others do it. This is not building inspectors, not code enforcement, or otherwise. Um, my client. You know, just wants to clarify it. He's willing to accept the 35%, has designed his project based on 35%. Um, and, you know, if we can amend it and, and that way it clears up this title, and that's consistent what you've done with every other map, you know, 60,000 square foot lots with 35% clearing, that's consistent. And, and you're carrying over that aquifer protection overlay district policy even though it carries over into the village because it seems the village wants to keep that intact and they're willing to allow you to go to 35. So I, I just have problems that it's being characterized as a condition that the town board and the village board have to do something. So, so I, I, I agree. And in deferring to Robin, Christine, I think the cleanest way is just to do our simple standard covenant amendment. You can do it. I think Robin amendment. will be happier um, and just, we, you know, you've heard the discussion. You can bring our thoughts to the town board, but why, why it, um, inject another provisional language? Um, it just clouds the whole process. Let's. I, I would say let's just do our standard thirty-five percent, right, Robin? And then I, I, I feel more comfortable for, on behalf of, of, of. And then we know the aquifer is protected, and we've done our planning job, and. And then it's up to the village and the town to clean this yeah. issue up. I think that's a Christine, unless you had an objection, that's probably the sentiment of the board. I, I can't object. My, <laughs> I can't object. I can raise oh. the issues. I can give you solutions either way. I don't object. Okay. Whatever well, the board I, wants, I will I will defend. But you'll bring this conversation to the town board, hopefully expeditiously. I'm sure you will. <laughs> it's not only this one, it's all the other lots there. Wait till the next one comes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait till the next one. Uh, Claire, what say you? One of our. What would you like to do? <laughs> do you want to do one of our one? generic standard yeah. cut and paste? Twenty five percent to thirty five percent. With with the standard findings acknowledging the code, you know we've had boilerplate language, and let's just yep. work up. Let's just move forward with that. Okay. So yeah. do we have a motion to amend the covenant to thirty five percent? I'll make the motion. Motion by Robin. <laughs> We have a second. I'll second. Greg, you're laughing. You're the second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We have six in favor. Thanks, everybody, for the effort on this, especially Christine. She's like, uh, <laughs> my head hurts. <laughs> Well, thank you. It is a complicated issue, and uh, thank you, Robin, for all your service. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Robin's wisdom. <laughs> our, last, our last day of Robin's input. She's making us, making my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have one there. more action if we want to do that. It's number 13. Number 13, okay. Wildlife Associates. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, oh, that's different. Site disturbance. Yeah. We number had a bunch 13. of these in wildlife. I, that, that's the map. That's right. the map. Method. It's kind of like Bridgewood. Yeah. Right. Um, this is. Uh, And this would be for veteran plan. Um, on this, this would be to adopt uh, for the registration of jobs. It's a standard language. Okay. Do we need to see the? It's just a, a revenge standard. Oh yeah. Sorry. I thought I was showing you, and I wasn't. 
Oh, there you go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> My head hurts. Perfect. What's yours? Lovely. So this is the revegetation plan. It's definitely in order. And uh, um, <clears throat> that's the percentage shown. So that's to take them back to the 50%. Okay. What? All right. We're there. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the reveg plan? Motion by Gloria. We have a second, second by George. All in favor? I have, I, have to, to I have to recuse on this one, please. Okay. Then we have um, four yes, one absent, one recusal. Is that okay. correct? Yeah. Two absent. Two absent. Sorry. Yeah. Two absent, one recusal. Four yes. All right. And then just acknowledge. Uh, there you're acknowledging the signature. Yep. I, that's item 22. We're acknowledging that was signed. That was, that was signed. Yeah. I thought you had some other. Oh, Anthony's. Um, that was from. Yeah, that was from last meeting. It's not on the agenda, but I did go into mm -hmm. the yesterday and signed it. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Is Anthony here or what's yes, his he head? Is. There he is. There I am. <laughs> um, Number, just so you know, number nine, Teresi is off the agenda. Nine is off, okay. Um, that. Number 10 is the Hampton Bay's Fire District. Um, I got a request from the applicant actually uh, to do an extension of the action deadline uh, until May 26, 2022. Very good, do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian, second by Robin. All in favor, aye, opposed, abstentions. We have, you have five yes. Wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, yes. Yes, correct. We're back, we're back. We're back. Craig's back. Uh, and then uh, number 12, which is 911 Flanders. Six, yes. Uh, Six, yes. This is uh, the board, our board remember, we did a pre-submission on this. Uh, this is the proposed gas station uh, and 711 convenience store at the traffic circle, uh, Flanders Road and Riverlay Avenue. Uh, we did a pre-submission conference on this one. Uh, the application is currently before the Zoning Board of Appeals for a determination as to whether or not the convenience store is accessory to the gas station, uh, in addition to uh, a whole bunch of variances uh, for the site plan. Um, they did a coordinated secret review um, for this unlisted action. Uh, we indicated to them that we wanted to be, or the board wanted to be lead agency uh, on this application. Uh, so today's action uh, is just for the board to formally establish themselves as lead agency. Um, and just so the board understands, uh, you have 20 days uh, once that's done for a secret determination. Uh, and I expect to have this on again for May 26th for a secret determination. Uh, so today it's just to uh, designate yourself as lead agency. Okay, very good. Do we have a motion for lead agency? Motion, motion by Gloria and second by Craig. All in favor, aye. Opposed, abstentions. I can't see the screen, but I think it's. Oh, six. sorry, sorry. <laughs> I think it's six. Sorry about that. Six, six, yes. Um, and I believe I have number eighteen. Mm -hmm. Totero. Charles uh, M. Totero, revocable trust. Um, incidentally, just so the board knows, I had sent you uh, all the secret documents in the traffic study. By the way, that the applicant submitted for Seven Eleven, so you have that. Um, this next one is, sorry, let me get back here. Okay. Uh, this is Charles M. Tatero Revocable Trust. Uh, this is a uh, property. These are two properties in Noyak. Um, we got Oak Drive and Mill Road. Uh, the two properties are here, two existing structures on each property. It is uh, R15 zone. Uh, the applicant is proposing to do a lot line change. Um, I believe the uh, properties are in the similar ownership um, to transfer uh, some land from this property to this property. And I'll show you the map. Um, you can see here, pink and purple, the existing lots, uh, and then the proposed lots in pink and purple over here. It's going to make them even. Uh, it doesn't require, it doesn't appear to require any um, zoning relief um, for setbacks or for lot area or for yeah. lot width. Uh, so it looks pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, doesn't look like there's any uh, septic issues or anything like that. So um, I would recommend that we deem this complete and schedule the hearing for uh, December 9th. What, June 9th? June, June 9th. June 9th. June 9th, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Merry Christmas. Okay, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Glorian. 
Second by George, all in favor, aye. Opposed, aye. abstentions. We have six yes. One yes. absent. Um, then the next one, this is uh, the subdivision of uh, Luciano. This is on Millstone Road. Um, and uh, Noyak, uh, and it is in the R80 zoning district. Um, it's got an existing residence, uh, two man-made ponds, a tennis court, five uh, This was actually Matt's application uh, that I took over. It was previously deemed um, incomplete, um, and we were really trying to get some information as it relates to the ponds. Um, by, by all measures, um, it, it, it seems that these ponds uh, were man-made and aligned. Um, but the, the big question that we had uh, for deeming this complete was whether or not um, we were going to, because it's a three lot subdivision, here's the map, uh, all the existing improvements on this lot, and then with two other lots uh, on Millstone Road. Uh, the question really was, um, did you want um, a cluster plan uh, for this application? And this was one of those applications where I was reviewing, and I'm really not sure yet. Uh, we may want one. Um, it really sort of depends on a number of factors. Um, most notable is really what the environment division is going to say. Um, once we get a complete application, um, then we refer it out to the other agencies. Uh, so this happened to be one of those subdivisions where uh, we may want a cluster plan um, or um, depending on because um, right now um, this whole plot here takes most of the improvements um, or <clears throat> if we could accomplish <clears throat> what we want here uh, with easements, uh, conservation easements. Um, so what I was gonna suggest in this particular case um, was that we deem the application complete schedule uh, for December 9th. Uh, and then let's see what we get out of the town engineer and the conservation board. Uh, and then if, if a, a cluster plan is warranted in this case, uh, we would recommend it in the pre-application report uh, that they would Anthony, have to do a cluster plan. Anthony, it looks like the, the lot, um, the one on, I'm gonna call it the left, um, gotcha. has a lot of clearing from the existing driveway to the existing house. Um, what's that gonna do for the, for the ability for a, a place to put the house and is it gonna be over cleared? I'm, I'm assuming this is in, in the APOD. It is in the APOD. So um, the, the, that issue will be, uh, have to be addressed. In other words, uh, as part of the pre-application report, I'll do an analysis of the clearing associated with each lot, mm -hmm. uh, how much they're allowed, um, if it's going to require e any revegetation. Uh, but my guess is, is that this driveway would be removed because um, they're showing a new one to provide access here. Uh, and that we're going to have to look at what the total clearing is on that property. Um, and make a determination as to whether or not uh, additional revegetation is going to be required. What, what about the, um, the building envelope? Will, will they need zoning relief? It seems like it's a pretty narrow piece of property. Um, it, it, it looks narrow, but uh, it's, uh, believe it or not, um, here, let me just go back. It's actually a pretty big preset property. It's actually in the two acre zone. Um, so, uh, you know, this, this looks like an area where we would be, as you can see, um, just to the south, we're in the five acre zone. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll find that a lot of the lots in the area are larger uh, than two acres, uh, but the, the, we will ask for a building uh, permit. I mean, a, a building envelope plan, uh, but the lot itself meets the zoning requirements, meets the minimum lot size and lot width. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, dece uh, so it's deceiving. Is very deceiving, um, and we'll we'll see with with you know if there's any slope issues, you know we'll we'll look at the building envelope. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would recommend uh, deeming it complete and then having the hearing on December 9th. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty hill, sure. hilly in there. So yeah, it is. Again, is that December 9th, Anthony, or, or June 9th? I'm oh, sorry, I keep saying I'm, I'm <laughs> consistently wrong, George. I'm <laughs> well, I'm consistent. That's good. December 9th. My apologies. <laughs> Okay, so we're, we're complete on that. Yeah. Okay, uh, full screen, uh, Anthony, please. Yes. Okay, do we have a motion to deem complete in June 9th? Motion by Glorian, second by George. All in favor, aye, opposed, <laughs> abstentions, six yes. And you got one more, Anthony Strebel and Klein. Yep. 
let me just uh, show that to you uh, real quick. Um, so this property, um, this is in West Hampton. This is Mill Road. This is John Way. At the corner here is the 7-Eleven site. Um, this is the post office. Um, and then this was uh, an American Legion uh, building uh, that uh, was demoed. Uh, the property is HC Zone, Hamlet Commercial. Um, applicant has proposed, um, um, and let me see if I could. Okay, there we go. Uh, basically showing a two-story building um, with parking in the back, um, with some transition in the front, some transition in the back. I should note for the board that um, So all this land surrounding the property is owned by the town. It's preserved land. Uh, it's residentially zoned, but it is it is preserved land. Uh, um, so they're proposing um, two story building. Um, it's actually pretty attractive looking. Um, it's going to be a two story uh, building, office building, uh, with uh, one apartment on the second floor. Um, as of right now, we're looking at. Um, a total of 4,000 square feet. So if you remember in the HC zoning district, you're allowed a building up to 3,000 square feet. Um, and then for every thousand uh, square feet over the 3,000 square feet, you have to provide one uh, accessory apartment. In this case, the first and second floor total 4,000 square feet. So they're required to provide one uh, accessory apartment, uh, which is part of the plan here. Uh, so uh, first floor office space, some office space on the second floor uh, and a accessory part. Um, so it's just I a system. Uh, it would have to be. Well, have um, to be yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, but uh, where it's a pre-submission, so um, so this one I would recommend, and I wrote down here December twenty. Uh, sorry, December June twenty third, because um, I think we have a bunch on now for December up uh, June 9th. <laughs> I don't know why I, I wrote it down all, like five times as December on here. Right? Um, okay. So um, June 23rd for this one. June 23rd. Okay, can we have full screen? Yep. Do we have a motion then for be completeness for June 23rd? Motion. Motion by Gloria and second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? We have six yes. And just real quick, Dennis, um, I uh, just to acknowledge 148 Priscilla, um, uh, Glorian uh, did sign the maps. Okay, that's an add-on for that's an add -on. map signature uh, 148 Priscilla. We we're acknowledging um, that it was- uh, I signed it. Signed it. Okay, great. And we're back at seven. Um, we only have two on tonight, so it should be quick, pretty quick. Yep, okay. I'll be here, so. Great. Thank you. Do we have a motion to, oh, do we have a motion to, Robin? Did we, I'm tonight? sorry, did we, do, did we do 13 Wildlife Associates? 13. Or was that taken off the agenda? We, uh, we did that. We did it. The that was a revenge, right? That was that was a, the yeah, the revenge. Yeah. That's a revenge. Gotcha. So Sorry. we have a motion to adjourn by Robin. Second. Second by Glorian. We'll see you at seven o'clock. See you at seven. See you guys. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.